Welcome to Canison's Clips. In this tutorial, we are going to look at creating and documenting a simple part file in Inventor LT. To begin with, what is Inventor LT and what is the difference between that and Inventor and Inventor Professional? Inventor LT is a 3D parametric modeling package that allows you to design and document part files. Inventor has all the functionality of LT, but further allows you to create functional sheet metal parts and flat patterns, fully construct general assemblies, and contains a comprehensive standard part content library. Last of all, Professional contains all of the previous, plus four additional modules, tube and piping, cable and harness, mould design and FEA and dynamic simulation. In most engineering offices, it's quite possible that you already have legacy data. I'm going to use this as an example of reusing the 2D design that I already have in AutoCAD of a wheel hub. If we take a quick look at this file, you will see that the data has been filtered onto different layers in AutoCAD. I'm going to turn off the visibility of the majority of this and only leave the cross-sectional view. I'm then going to do a Windows copy of this view. Switching over to Inventor LT. I'm going to begin with starting a new template, the standard IPT file in Inventor. This will place me straight into a 2D sketch mode. This is where most AutoCAD users will feel most comfortable as the commands here actually originate from AutoCAD. Instead of redrawing this from scratch, I'm going to paste directly from AutoCAD. When the data comes in, it is important to locate the sketch around the origin point. I'm going to use the move command to place the bottom of the center line onto the sketch origin. You'll find that instead of the command interface you may be familiar with in AutoCAD, Inventor mainly interfaces using dialog boxes. With the sketch correctly positioned, I'm now going to exit the 2D environment and enter 3D. To create the main body of the wheel hub, I'm going to use the command revolve. Revolve requires a closed profile and a center line to generate the body. Using the view cube in the top right hand corner, I'm now going to move the part around so that we can get a better view of what the software has just done. With the main part complete, I'm now going to fill in the front design of the spokes. This requires that we go back to a 2D environment using Create 2D Sketch and selecting a flat surface to do it on. Again, I'm going to be using my AutoCAD data for the design, but instead of using copy and paste, this time I'm going to input the geometry through Inventor. In the translation process, we get the opportunity to filter what it is that we want to bring in while also setting up the units. In the original AutoCAD file, the sketch is located around 00, zero and therefore comes in at the correct position, also 00, zero in Inventor. With this done, I can now exit the 2D environment and return to 3D. This time the command that I want to use is extrude. This requires a closed profile to give depth to. Some options in the dialog box allow me to flip the direction of the depth or give it in both directions. I'm setting my thickness to 26 and then I can accept this command. Most of the design of my wheel hub is now complete and the last thing I'm going to do is add some fillets to give my spokes a nicer appearance. Every edge that I select will be given a radius. Don't worry too much if you select a wrong edge. Hold the control key down on the keyboard and then select the edge again to deselect it. Another thing to make my wheel hub look a little bit more realistic is a surface finish. You will find a large range of colours and textures to apply to your model. I'm going to use Chrome. Last of all, I'm going to set a property in the model. This is material, so that it gives it a mass, volume and area calculations. And now I can save my file.
With the modelling out of the way, we can now document our design. To do this, we need to start off a completely different template. Mine may look a little different to yours as I've done some company customization to this template. We can start by placing some standard views. I'm also going to place an isometric view in the top right hand corner. I'm not too happy with the standard isometric view so what I'm going to do is set my own. Using the view cube I can reset a view to one that I'm happy with. I'm also going to make this view slightly smaller. And I'm also going to choose to render it. The last view that I'd like to place is a section view. This command allows you to sketch the cross section. Be careful when you're hovering your mouse over the page as it may line up and snap with other geometry on the page. With all the views created, we can now flip over to the Annotate tab at the top of the screen. This gives me all of the commands I need now to document the views. Placing dimensions is very much like you would do in AutoCAD, requiring two inputs and a placement. I'm going to add some overall dimensions to my wheel hub. I can also place text I'm going to place a set of general notes A handy thing that you can do is retrieve information from the model things like the material, volume and mass that we set up earlier The great thing about doing that is if there is any update on the model, these fields will automatically update. Just like setting the properties for the model, we can do the same with the drawing. Information that we change here will be stored and sent to the title block. Once we have finished, we can save the work in either Inventor File Format IDW or AutoCAD DWG. Before I finish up, let's take a quick look at the finished file in AutoCAD. You'll notice that the dimensions, the entities, and also the layers are now transferred over into AutoCAD format. This means that you can turn off information that you may not need. That's it for this tutorial on Event LT. I hope it gives you some ideas and tips on what you can model and document as well as how to reuse your 2D legacy data and designs. If you have any other questions, please feel free to contact our technical support line at CAG Group Australia. Thanks for tuning in.